with four cups of cooked macaroni. This is elbow macaroni. You can really use whatever small cut macaroni you prefer. And then we're going to move on to our vegetables. I have a half a cup each of chopped celery, chopped sweet onion, chopped green bell pepper, chopped red bell pepper. I have two hard cooked eggs that I chopped as well. I have one cup of good quality mayonnaise, a tablespoon of granulated sugar, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and then our seasonings. I have a half a teaspoon each, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, and celery seed. You can adjust that to your liking, whatever you prefer, then you can just go with it. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of dump all of our veggies in here and then we'll build our dressing. For the dressing, I'm just gonna go ahead and put all of these ingredients in here. Sugar, cider vinegar. You can adjust this to your liking as far as sweetness goes and add either more or less sugar. It's up to you. And then our seasonings. Everything goes in there. We're just gonna give this a good whisk. And that's it. This is not as thin as a coleslaw dressing. It's, it's just, you need it to be a little bit thicker because you have to remember, all these veggies and this wet macaroni are going to actually um, add some water into this. All we're gonna do is take this dressing and pour it over all of this in the bowl. And then we're just gonna stir this up together. This is always best if it is left to sit for a couple of hours before you eat it so that the macaroni absorbs the dressing and everything tastes amazing. But let's give this a taste just to make sure all of our flavors are where we want them. Yum. That's yummy. Mm -hmm. So that is how simple it is to make an Amish style um, macaroni salad. It has a sweet and sour taste to it with the addition of a little bit of sugar and the vinegar. I hope you give this Amish style macaroni salad recipe a try. We have two 28 ounce cans of country style Bush's baked beans. And we add to that very simple ingredients. We add about a half a cup of uh, brown sugar and an entire pound of rendered bacon. Um, I do not drain this. If your bacon is extremely greasy, then I recommend that you drain it. But what you see in the bowl is exactly how it came out of the pan. It didn't render hardly any grease at all. I gotta say this is actually the way my mom used to make them. Well, there you go. And if you like or prefer, you can sub out the brown sugar for molasses. We have done that in the past. Or you can use half and half. Now these go in a slow cooker. Uh, I just have a small slow cooker here. You guys have more than one slow cooker because I have like four of them, different sizes. It just depends on what we're doing. And like I said, these are two 28 ounce cans. They also make a large, uh, I think they make a 60 ounce can and they make a number 10 can. So you use what you think is best for your needs and then you can adjust the other ingredients. In goes our bacon. Is that a whole pound? This is a whole pound of Nieces bacon and um, this I, uh, I just cooked in a skillet. I cut it up first into little pieces and I threw it in a hot skillet and I, rend I just cooked it really slow until it was crispy. And there goes our brown sugar. Give that a stir. Into the slow cooker, I'm gonna set it on low. We're gonna let this go for a few hours and then we'll be back and we'll show you what they look like. There you have it. Rick's picnic beans are all done. They've been cooking in the crock pot for about three hours. They're beautiful, they're thick, they're steamy, and they're ready to enjoy. These, I kid you not, these are the best leftover. They get better with time. And if you get any leftovers, because I have been known to take over a gallon of these to a church function and not have a spoonful left to bring home with us. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. We make these for Thanksgiving, we make them for Easter, and we make them in between in smaller batches. But when we make, when you know, for holidays and for church events, we go big time. Um, these are super delicious, super easy. They don't break the budget and everybody enjoys them. So you can see how thick and beautiful they are. You can see the big pieces of bacon that are in there. And Rick wanted me to remember to mention 
that if you get to a point where you've it's been in the crock pot for a while sometimes crock pots cook differently or slow cookers cook differently and some of them create a lot of condensation so if you find that your beans are a little bit soupier than you like just um, kind of offset the lid a little bit and or put a wooden spoon in there and keep it on high for about an hour and let some of that liquid cook off and reduce your beans and they'll be perfect. I hope that you give Rick's Picnic Beans a try sometime soon and I hope you love them. But what you're gonna need is four cups of either white bread or in this case, I had some brioche hamburger buns left over so I just cubed them up and until I had four cups worth. You need one 20 ounce can of crushed pineapple. Um, you don't have to squeeze it dry. In my old video, I told you to take all the liquid out, but there's really not that much liquid in here. And if you take all the liquid away, you lose a lot of the pineapple-y flavor. So I'm gonna just tell you to drain off what comes out before you take the lid off and just tip it over the sink or into a cup and enjoy that. About a quarter of a cup comes out and then just leave it like that. You're gonna need a stick of butter or a half a cup melted, four eggs, a half a cup of granulated sugar, and then everybody's favorite, mini marshmallows. This is two cups worth. So I'm just gonna start building this. I'm gonna move my pan of bread off to the side because we're gonna actually take care of those in just a minute. So what you wanna do is uh, crack your eggs into uh, a bowl and just give them a little bit of a whisk. Now I'm gonna add my granulated sugar. I'm gonna add the pineapple. Get that blended in there really well. All right, go ahead and add your butter in there as well. And now we're gonna pop all the bread in here. Give it a good stir. And just like French toast, you kind of want that bread to get in there and soak up all that delicious custard that you've made. Even though there's no milk here, it's still custard because we've added liquid to eggs and it's gonna be fabulous. I'm really looking forward to this. We haven't had this in a long time. I'm gonna add in all of the marshmallows now and you can just give that a good stir as well. And into our pan, I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a quick spray with some coconut oil and I'm going to pour our custardy mixture into the pan. Let's get it all in there, spread it out evenly. We're gonna bake this in a 350 oven for about 40 minutes or until it's nice and brown and toasty and everything is set up. I'll bring you back when it's ready to enjoy. Well, there you have it. Our pineapple bake has baked all the way. It took 40 minutes. I allowed it to cool on top of the stove for just about 10 minutes before we cut into it and it is absolutely perfect. Please put this pineapple bake on your Easter menu. You will be happy that you did. I hope you give it a try and I hope you love it. And until next time, I'll see ya.